And that was a small matter of 59 years ago now. Mm. And here we are, you're, I mean, you're merely a man in your mid-60s now. And here we are, 59 (laughs) years later, talking about the extraordinary sort of literary and political and emotional legacy that all these events have left behind. And as we were saying at the beginning of this discussion, you only have to open a newspaper these days to see your father's name. You only have to pick up the programme for this literary festival to see the extraordinary you know, imprint that, his, mm, that, his, that yes. his thumb has left on it. I mean, for you, I mean, as a, you know, and you went off, you had very little connection with the literary world. You went off and did other things. I did you, my own thing. You did your own thing, but yes. all the time you must surely have been conscious of this extraordinary oh, God, yes. tradition. What, what do you make of that? I mean, well, what is it, again, this is a very banal question, but it has to be asked. What is it like to be George Orwell's son wandering well, around a, in, this, in this world, you know, where his I'm spectre hat, which is spectre I'm not quite over. sure. I'm not quite sure what the answer to that is. Um, you have to remember, of course, he died when I was very young. So I was, in many ways, I was being brought up as a sort of a, almost as an outsider looking in, but I'm, I'm already on the inside. Um, I was kept, I suppose, because don't forget, for the first 10, 15 years, uh, his name was not immediately recognisable throughout the world. Um, it, it was more in the literary, literary world. It, mm. it was only as time went on mm. that his, his, his fame sort of spread slowly. Like a was, there, was there a moment when you, uh, a sort of Damascene moment, when you became aware of, the, in 1984, for example, when an enormous oh, fuss was made? Yes, did no, you no, suddenly I, turn around and think, you know, hang on, there is, you know, I'm at the, you know, I'm at the, sort of the apex of something really <laughs> extraordinary that, that my father created? Um, no, there wasn't <laughs> quite the sort of the, the road to Damascus. It was really a sort of a, a slow... Mm. Slow burn, a slow understanding mm. uh, as time went on. You know, when I went to, I was sent off to prep school, and of course people had heard of him and were quite interested. And you know, if you spoke to people and uh, you got into conversation, and uh, you, for whatever reason you might mention the fact that you know, oh, my father was, I was adopted by George Orwell, their eyes would light up and say, "My God, my God!" Uh, so yes, it, it would slowly, slowly dawn on me that. Um, you know, here was a man who really had an enormous influence in the world. And you say, you can't open a newspaper without, and probably people think, oh my God, here he goes again. Um, but uh, yes, because he, he's, everything he said, which he put down in, in simple words, of course, we, are, we, we see all about us, I'm afraid. When one, after one more question, I'm going to ask members of the audience would care to contribute to this, but I, one thing I do just want to ask you, again, from the biographer's point of view, which is... Um, you always used to say, or I've heard you say, you may or may not have said it to me, but I've heard you say it, that, um, that you've almost thought that your, your memories of, of your father, and especially at the time on Jura, were more or less finite. Um, you know, that there were things that you knew about and could yes. recall in place. Do you find, though, I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've just read you, that's obviously not a Jura memory, but I've just read you that letter from Lady Violet from 1950. Do you find that occasionally there is what I call buried memory here, and that there are things that do spring up and you suddenly do recall things about him that perhaps have been missing in your head for 40, 50 years, and there are suddenly aspects of him that strike you that weren't... Um, there. That no, I don't think so, to be honest. <laughs> As you get older, you start to forget, I'm afraid. <laughs> but uh, well, things become a little bit uh, sort of blurred, as I tell you, and a bit blurred around the edges because you hear and read more and more and more, and and other people's opinions, other people's letters. Uh, oh, he did this, or he did that, or you know, with Richard, and uh, you think, oh, did that happen? Do I remember that, or don't I? So the things I remember about my father were pretty much constant uh, throughout my life, because you only, I mean, I only had him for five and a half years, and a lot of the time he wasn't there. That's right, I mean, we are just getting, unfortunately, we are getting to that point where, to remember him, unless you, know, you were a mere scrap of a lad like yourself, you have to be in your mid-70s to recall him, yes, uh, to, to I, have I seen him so. playing and have um, talked to him. Again, that time is just about getting to the point where the, the Orwell veterans are uh, uh, fading. I know yes. Peter, Peter Van Sitter died at the end of last year. He was 88. He was you know, a great chum of his from the Tribune days there. Well, um, beginning to yes, of course, don't forget he's uh, got uh, two nieces and a nephew who mm. are oh, very yes, much alive. Yes, yes, and they remember a great deal about him. And they are hale and hearty. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're in their 80s mm-hmm. um, and uh, living up in, in the Lake District. Mm-hmm. But uh, quite often my cousin Jane, whom I, I see quite a lot, um, She's the one who said, oh, no, 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 Rick, that's not, uh, that's not quite how it was. And she would feel 
Pull me did, up. You, did Jane have any comment to make about that Sunday Times interview you gave of that? Where we, um, you, no, what was Didn't like your photograph. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I I've think got we quite as much as that. But.